Now that we have learned much about macromolecules and somewhat about cells, we can apply what we learned to connect the dots. Let's see how organelles and macromolecules relate. First, we'll start with carbohydrates. Carbohydrates can be found in the food we eat. We can obtain most of the starch from fruits and man-made products like candies, chocolate, and other sweet food. We can obtain other carbohydrates from glycogen found in animals, in foods such as hamburgers, steaks, and all those meaty food. After we eat, the carbohydrates are transported into our cells. The carbohydrates will head over to the mitochondria and will be converted into energy for the cells. But if we have extra energy, extra carbohydrate, we can store them for future use so we can convert them into lipids. In lipid form, we can store as fats or we can make phospholipids to rebuild our membranes. If we make lipids phospholipids, we can export those to the cell membranes and all the organelles that require phospholipids like the Golgi, vacuoles, lysosome, ER, and nuclear membrane. So you see, we eat so we can rebuild our cells. Carbohydrate are useful for energy. We can also obtain lipids from eating food with fats. Of course, too much is bad. Next, extra carbohydrates can be used to create nucleic acids. You didn't know that? Well, let's take a look at our nucleotide, a nucleic acid monomer. What do you notice? Correct, there's a sugar group, which is why it's called a sugar backbone in DNA. Because the sugar group provides the structure for DNA, and it's made out of ribose. Can you guess what RNA stands for? Nucleic acids, as we learned before, but didn't go too much into details because it wouldn't make sense then, are connected by the phosphate group, structured by the sugar group, and defined by the bases. Okay, our last macromolecules. Yay, reunion, it's been a while since we haven't talked about macromolecules. Proteins are obtained from outside sources like meat. Besides obtaining carbohydrate from meat, we can also obtain proteins. Remember, we can't use other organism proteins, they're different from ours. We can break down the proteins into amino acids, which we can use to rebuild us. To break them down, we cook the food. So it's kind of like you can't take a wall from one building to create another building, but you can break down the wall and use the individual bricks to rebuild a new wall that fits the style of your building. And that's how proteins work. Alright, let's absorb. Later on, you'll learn about transcription and translation, the process for creating proteins. But for now, just know that amino acids are transferred to the ribosome and changed into proteins. Once we have our new sets of proteins, we can export them to the rest of the body, like hair proteins, or nails, or enzymes, or for blood clothing, and so on.